Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. In today's episode, we're going to break down the daily ticker, our weekly newsletter, and we're going to talk about whether or not last week's innocent two-hour short covering rally ignited a new bullish market right before our eyes. It's very interesting. A big part of trading is understanding if this happens, then I plan to do this. The other side of that is whether or not if something that you expect to happen, such as the market breaking down, does not and whether or not that's a signal to start trading in the other direction. I can tell you one thing, which we're actually going to go over right now, which is some of the short sale opportunities for last week. In other words, looking for the market to go down and profiting as the market goes down did not follow through. We had quite a few of them set up on breakdown levels that looked like they had plenty of profit potential if they went down, <laughs> hit down below that levels, buyers came in, and now the futures are actually trading higher. We're going to take a look at that chart in a second as well. So we're actually going to map out this entire week, which is the last week of trading stocks for 2022. I don't know about you, but it has been an exhausting but pretty good year if you have a trading system, which means that you have an edge and you go and look for ideas that match that edge. We're also going to talk a little bit about something known as revenge trading. And it's kind of the effect of having losing trades and not having that one big winner and kind of piling into one trade, hoping to make it back. I'm going to explain what it is, why it's bad, uh, how I used to do it early in my career and why I don't anymore. And we're going to talk about probably one of the most important words for this entire year of trading, which is patience. <laughs> and there's two types of patience that we're going to dive into today. So we got a lot of stuff to cover today. We're going to set up the week, the last week of trading into the year. So stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much for being here with me today, everybody. Hope everybody is having an amazing, amazing holiday season. If you happen to be here in the States, if you're overseas, thank you so much for watching this and for being a part of our community. I just want you to know this has been a, a growing year for me as well, being here on YouTube, doing YouTube live streams. And uh, it's an actual privilege to be here with you. So I wanted to thank you personally to say um, I really appreciate you giving me my time. And especially for those of you that have subscribed and continue to come back. I put everything I can into these and hopefully you're getting massive value out of these videos as well. OK, so we're going to actually hop right into it. we're going to talk about last week's short covering rally, what a short covering rally means. Then we're going to hop over into actually going through my research heading into today, uh, which is the research that I give our private community every day uh, and break down some of the sectors, the stocks and what the market looks like right now. And we could be looking at a lot of people caught on the wrong side of the tape right now, which is short sellers looking at last week's breakdown, not getting out of those positions and now waking up to stock futures, having a much, much higher move this morning and kind of scrambling now. We're also going to talk about Tesla. A couple of people mentioned Tesla this morning. Who was it? Uh, somebody had mentioned Tesla's in a free fall front. Yep, you got it. Uh, it's not looking pretty right now. And actually, what's super interesting right now, if we kind of hang on, uh, and hop over right into the Tesla chart this morning and take a look at it. Uh, Tesla is actually getting pounded this morning down at 116 and change while the futures are actually trading higher at this point, which is super, super interesting right now. So what do you need to put into that equation? My gosh, if this doesn't really tell you, don't pick bottoms. I don't know what will. Tesla is, I think Franz used the tremendous word there as free fall right now where it is getting pounded while the market's going up. And this is really the big conversation that a lot of people have that simply because a stock is lower than where it was before, that now it's a value. i got to tell you, at the very, very least, if you are looking to dip your toes into Tesla right now and looking for a spot, for me personally, and, and literally in my own trading, what I'm looking for right now is I want to see Tesla at the very least show exhaustion candlesticks, which is a giant spike in volume after a momentum move to the downside, which we actually did get last week. But here's the thing. That's only one part of the trade. Now, I'm going to pull that up first just so we can see exactly what we're talking about right now. And um, I'm going to pull Tesla back up and then we're going to hop into the rest of the newsletter. So price action is one thing, but you need to have price action combined with volume, which is real money spent. And you can see how much expansion in volume Tesla has right now, right? It's actually really spiking. But what we want to see on the daily charts is this type of candle. We want to see higher highs, 
higher lows and closing near the high. And you can see we're actually not seeing that. This candle right here was actually a bullish engulfing candlestick, but it didn't go what we call well bid. Well bid is what we see here, higher highs and higher lows. When we see Tesla go higher highs, higher lows, and increased volume, that is going to be the signal for me to at least believe in the short term based on price action. Again, I'm not forecasting that buyers are stepping up and they finally had the market, uh, that stock in their control where the sellers kind of dried up. It pushed it down to a level where, look, cash flow at some point doesn't make any sense that the price continues to go down. But I think we can all agree. I know Elon Musk is talking about macroeconomic conditions and all those kind of things. This stock is getting beat up because he's spending way too much time on Tesla. And look, can you be, can you blame him? I mean, honestly, long-term Tesla stockholders have to be really pissed off right now. But can you blame Elon Musk? Let's say, uh, for example, let's say that Bill, good morning, Bill, how's it going? Let's say that Bill spent $44 billion on something. You bet your bottom dollar that Bill's going to pay attention to it because he wants to turn that asset, especially with all of the Tesla stock that he's had to sell and with something that's actually really important right now as well, all of the Tesla stock that he had to put up as margin for loans. Yeah, I'd be paying attention to it as well. Not good for Tesla shareholders over the last three to four months, but that's the price action we're looking for. So you want to write down on your legal pad, looking for Tesla to have a well-bid daily candlestick on heavy volume that closes near the high. So I just want to give you a visual of what that looks like one more time. It would be a candle that looks something like this, higher highs, higher lows, and we want to see an expansion in volume. If that can happen for one or two days, then we're actually looking okay. But as of right now, you can see it's actually below 116. That's just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So what we want to do though, is we want to talk about the rally and the short covering rally that we have right now, stocks and commodities jumping. And again, this is the reason after the fact, as China drops their quarantine rules. So that's actually what we're seeing over here in the futures market right now. And if we kind of zoom this in just a little bit more, you can see we're up 18. We were actually up a little bit more not too long ago. And Franz is actually right. It does look like Tesla's being dragged down by the uh, dragging down the rest of the market. But the bottom line is, whatever the reason is, we're actually up right now. But what I want to talk about is last week. And if you didn't happen to see this right here, this was actually last Thursday. If you're going into the afternoon last Thursday and you're looking at this price action, you got to be like, oh, my gosh, we're just going to be completely falling out of bed. This is where, remember, I want to I want to make sure that we're ending the year on some really strategic stuff and really having yourself in control of the outcome. A lot of people this year, and we're going to talk about this, complaining about the market, but I got news for you. <laughs> and I'm a New Yorker. There's a thing such as road rage up there. You can't get mad at the market any more than you can get mad at traffic. It does absolutely nothing. We're going to talk in a second about the short covering rally and how that's playing into this reversal to the upside. But here's the thing. If you saw this, uh, this decline at the end of the day on Thursday, and again, it doesn't matter if you're day trading stocks or swing trading stocks, you got to be feeling pretty good that the market at that particular point broke down here, kind of zoom this thing out over here broke down and had some room to go right here on Thursday. You're like, my gosh, there's really no major support below there. I either have to get out of this thing, or if you're looking for a short sale, you'll look for it to continue pushing down. Well, that's not what happened. We actually had a vicious move to the upside. Now, let's talk about what a short covering rally means, because it's kind of like a big mystery. We kind of tied it into the Loch Ness Monster last week of trading that everybody says that they've seen one, but nobody's actually really sure. So what a short covering rally is and how to notice it and how to trade it is what's actually more important is you need selling. You need some sort of bearish order flow where there's selling pressure on either the market or the stock. So as that's happening, and again, you need to get the language down. This is very, very important, especially if you've ever traded on a trading floor. Like I had my trading floor in New York City. If you said that you bought Tesla, but you were actually exiting a short sale, you'd get a whole bunch of people throwing paper at you because, you know, crumbling up paper and throwing it at because their language is wrong. So what ends up happening is if you short sell a stock and you have to get out of it, technically, yes, you're buying that stock back. But the proper language on a trading floor is if you short sell to exit that trade, you are covering that stock. So that's where we hear the language of short covering rally 
is there was a really obvious move to the downside and people were short selling that stock, borrowing stock from their broker dealer, which is how you short something or sell something you don't own. If it goes down or, and moves in your favor to get out of that position, you're buying it back. But the trading language is short covering. You're covering that stock to get out of it. So when that happens in a big way where a lot of people are seeing the same exact thing where it's not going down anymore, even though it's obvious it stops going down, short sellers buy that stock back and they start to pile on top of each other. And that's what a short covering rally is. It's technically a rally of buying, which makes the stock go up, which is what we saw here in the market and the future and uh, a lot of stocks last Thursday. So short covering is buying back, which exits a short position. Now, a lot of people are exiting that position because it's not going down, but that does not mean that new buying stepped in yet. This is really where the, the kind of vague part uh, or the mystery of short covering comes in. It's technically what happens after the short covering rally, the price action that happens afterwards. So you see these kind of V bottoms, right? And on Friday, we did not actually rally right back down to this level. We kind of hit the skids here and rallied and if new short sellers came in, we would have seen this thing go back down towards that level. V bottoms usually have go right back down. It's when we go sideways after that, that things become interesting. Here's the more language that I want to give you. That means that buyers held the bid. Holding the bid, if you can visualize when a stock pushes up and pulls back, that's a normal function of the market, right? We talk about it all the time, a push and a pause, right? More often than not, that looks like what people know as a bull flag a push up and a pause. But once in a while, you see a stock where they hold the bid. Holding the bid simply means that buyers are stepping up and they're not letting it pull back. So I want to be very clear about this. Normal is push up and pull back. We know that as a bull flag. When something different is happening and buyers are stepping up and they hold the bid, holding the bid means they're not letting it pull back. So here's the thing. When you see buyers holding the bid, not letting it pull back after a short covering rally, that's something that should make you sit up in your seat and say, wow, something changed here. I might not only want to get out of my short positions if you have any, but if you've been patient, this is the time to start paying attention to which stocks have relative strength while the market was weak. And we're going to get into that right now because I want to break down the best stocks that I'm looking at to buy right now which stocks are my game plan and how I plan to look at them. There's actually one tech stock that has pulled all the way back to the deepest level that I would consider buying it and gave me one of my favorite buying setups heading into today, which is Tuesday. I might've said Monday, today's Tuesday. It's already uh, a short week, right? So we're going to break it down. That's what happens in a short covering rally. We're going to determine what price action we need to see for this week to end the year looking for a rally and making some really nice p &L to end the year and we'll see what happens after January starts. But let's focus on the here and now. Who cares what's going to happen a week from now? Let's focus on making money this week. And let's focus on creating a really good game plan. If certain things happen, then we will know exactly what to do. And again, if you're struggling in the market this year, it just means that you're not going that one step deeper where you may be saying, I want this to happen, and then trading no matter what. Great traders are traders that really elevate themselves. And it could be you, just somebody that is more in control of the outcome if this happens, then I plan to do this. Here's the thing, though. If you're saying if this happens, but it doesn't, and you still take the trade anyway, got to stop that. Make that a resolution for next year. Make that a big part of your trading plan. You only trade what you wrote out. So now we're going to actually break down a little bit deeper. We're actually going to get into the newsletter. But first, we're going to start out with taking a look at sector rotation. And we're actually going to dive a little bit deeper into this in just a minute. But I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. And we're going to take a look at some of the opportunities that we're looking at heading into today. Now, what's kind of interesting is energy, which was bearish heading into last week and a half, uh, has now found a bid. Again, not allowing it to go down. They're holding up the bid and all near a breakout level. So we're going to take a look at some energy stocks, financial stocks. And this is really where you start to dig a little bit deeper. Financial stocks, not really looking fantastic, but they had a reasonable week last week. And I'm going to show you what I mean. There's actually one stock out of all of them that I'm taking a look at. Goldman Sachs actually punched down, but I'm not looking to trade that because it's still below all the levels that we're looking at. There is one financial stock that we're going to put in the list today and take a look at for a buying opportunity. 
Moving on over the list of stocks that meet stacked order flow, you can see that again, energy is in that list and it's not that big. This list sometimes can be as big as 30 or 40 stocks and only seven stocks meet the criteria. But again, success leaves clues. We're looking at energy stocks. I actually really like Schlumberger. I'm going to talk about that uh, in just a second. And you can see the bearish side of things. Now, the interesting thing on the bearish side of the tape, in other words, the list of stocks that meet criteria that says selling demand, uh, selling pressure is in control of that stock, that list has also shrank as well. So here's a phrase that we use a lot on the trading floor in, in, our, in our Discord community. We have these stocks that are going down and the market going down. And then all of a sudden we have market internals that we watch that tell us the tide is kind of changing. Here's the big thing, and I'm going to kind of use like a little bit of a joke, but it, it's one that I use with myself all the time, which, which again, which is I don't want to be fat anymore is different than I want to be healthy and fit. So just remember that because they sound like the same thing, but they're not. So what we're talking about here is we have less stocks that meet the bearish criteria, but that doesn't mean we're bullish yet. You want to write that down. You want to be very clear on that. Less bearish is not the same thing as bullish. It means that we kind of hit neutral. And that's really where I want to dig into the uh, mindset for trading this week. But really, it's really more the macro picture and the macro mindset that you wanted to have adopted for 2022. And, and I, there's one quote that I'm going to give you right now that has been a very, very big part of our private community. And I want to tell you why this quote matters. Can you imagine not paying attention to the kind of market conditions you're in? And I get it. We're all excited. Everybody wants to trade, right? Market's open. You read a headline. There's something going on. But then you go over to the market and you're like, well, it doesn't really look awesome, but you trade anyway, right? These little trades that you know you shouldn't be taking, you get all these death by a thousand paper cuts and you feel like the price action kind of lines up, but it's not perfect. And all of a sudden you dug yourself a hole when there was really nothing to do. I'm gonna explain how to think long-term through that, okay? So we just took a look at the market and how we're breaking down the market. Now we're gonna get a little bit deeper into what's going on and how we're actually breaking this down, setting up, okay? So today, Tuesday, welcome to part two of the stock market short covering rally. And that's actually what we're seeing over here. If we kind of hover back over into the futures, I just wanna make sure everybody has complete understanding of what we're looking at which is from here to here, we're following through on the short covering rally from the previous day and continuing to move higher, okay? All right, stock futures moved higher overnight and validated last week's failed breakdown. So again, it's very important to me that you have a good visualization of what we're talking about right now. So if we go back over to the SPY and we go back over to the daily chart of the S&P 500 ETF, we're talking about this breakdown here right in this spot here it broke down and came back right so now it's saying if this happens then right thursday afternoon produced a strong two-hour rally that just might have ignited a new bull market let's keep going all right several times in 2022 this is the big part that i want to get across because this is the difference between trading and just uh paying attention to what anybody tells you several times in 2022 a barrage of bearish headlines created fear but price action reversed and traded higher for several weeks. Now think about going back over the market. How many times you read quotes about Michael Burry and 53% moved to the downside and recession fears and we have this big rally, right? You got to pay attention to when and where these bearish headlines are coming out. And we actually had that over here right into all of these end of year doomsday predictions, okay? So now we're building an argument for thinking about trades, okay? Consecutive weeks lined up as bearish breakdowns, but ended up finding buyers at the last minute. So here's the thing that I want to get across to you. And again, this is more strategic stuff heading into 2023 that you want to make sure is a part of your daily game plan. When headlines hit the wire, whether you see it on Twitter or wherever you get your news from, right? You need to put into context what was the price action prior to that headline coming out. That's where you start to really elevate your trading and say, okay, that's great. Bad news, but the stock's been going down for six weeks in a row. Maybe I don't want to be looking at the other side of the market. Very 
carefully and very purposefully worded. Jesse Livermore, in reminiscences of a stock operator, he called the news the daily dope. <laughs> read that, read into that however you want. He basically was implying, and then later in the book, he explicitly said, headlines are created to have the public on the wrong side of the trades. Now, sometimes headlines are timely, such as earnings. Earnings come out, a good story comes out, depending on the expectations. And quite honestly, earnings, earnings rallies have been probably the most lucrative long trades that we've had over the last six months of the year. When I say long trades, earnings have come out and rallies coming off of earnings. I think probably IBM has been one of the better earnings plays for the year, just to really kind of dive into that and give you an idea of the way IBM has traded. Uh, over here, you can see the earnings play over here in IBM, which was this gap up. And look at that move, despite the market getting hitting the skids this year. OK, so you want to get a little bit more into what's going on. All right. Frustrating if you're short selling when bad news comes in and buyers come in and buy that. Right. Something to put into your trading journal. And this is a big part here. I'm going to actually highlight this for you. So it's super clear. Short selling rallies instead of breakdowns has led to better risk reward. So even if we go back into the S&P 500 over here, this rally over here led to a short sell. This rally over here led to this move to the downside. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm basically saying right now is breakouts on the long side, buying stocks for me personally this year has worked out better. Short selling rallies instead of short selling breakdowns has worked better for me this year. So I guess I'm going to challenge you a little bit right now. You know, a lot of you might not be in our in our coaching program. Our, our next boot camp starts next Monday. If you want to learn more about that, you can actually click below. Write that down in your trading journal and go over your trades this year and ask yourself which types of trades have worked better for you. There? Have they been purely reading the order flow and reading the tape? Have you been trading earnings good this year? Have you been trading news stories good this year? Have you been better on day trading or swing trading or long or short? Now is the time of year to be prepping for next year. You want to go into 2023 as a professional mindset, thinking about the stock market in a professional way and thinking about where do I make the most money? I know it sounds silly, but do more of that. Where have I lost the most money? And here's another thing that a lot of people don't consider. Which stocks am I producing the best P&L? And which stocks have just been absolutely kicking your butt? And I'm going to actually show you the one stock that's actually owned me this year. I have not made money in this stock at all this year. Uh, it's been Roku. Roku has just been absolutely demolishing me this year. Uh, and you can see again here is a, a, a push down and a rally, a push down and a rally. They haven't been following through. It's just been that way. I have no idea why. AMD and SQ have actually been two of my more uh, profitable stocks this year. Again, you need to have a list of stocks that work for you. Well, here's the thing. We have very short term memories when we're involved in the stock market. What matters is real data. I don't care if you have to go back three months, six months, whatever it happens to be. Again, remember, there's different times during the year that have different market conditions. Try and do this every three months because you're kind of trading that recent earnings season and how the market's been reacting. Go back three months and say, where did I make the most money? Where did I lose money? What, where did I find it challenging? And kind of stay away from that and then plan to do more of what worked coming up. Also thinking about what kind of chart patterns and what kind of market conditions led to the biggest wins for you. OK, that's very important. OK. All right. So kind of moving forward, speaking of being frustrated, OK, again, frustrated that the short selling has not been following through. Are you? I'll assume you are, especially with swing trade results. And this has been a very big uh, conversation inside of our coaching calls and specifically on our Sunday morning swing trade sessions, which we always host Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. So we get prepared for the price action of the coming week. If you have been frustrated with buying opportunities that have not followed through on your swing trades, I'm going to show you right now, especially in the last six weeks, why that's happening and why you shouldn't be getting mad and how to actually think through it properly. OK, there's a word we're going to use, which is called revenge trading. All right. So we're going to actually take a look at this picture first, which is this image over here of sector rotation and taking a look at what's been available. And if we go over here to the last six weeks, we've had nothing but neutral and one big week of selling. So if you happen to be one of those uh, people who've been like, I should be making more. Why are my, my buying opportunities following through? 
the market has been neutral at best. And when we have moved, it's been bearish. So what I want to get across to you right now is it's in the long run, it's so much more important and profitable to pay attention to what's available and not fight it. If you put on good trades that don't follow through, we've actually had a little bit of this happen this year where small profits have rallied and then come back. That's just the big market conditions, but you can't change the rules because of the market conditions. Now, you might change the time frame you're trading. Maybe instead of trading on the daily and weekly charts for swing trades, maybe you drop down to the hourly charts and use that tighter time frame because you feel like we're not getting follow through. But one thing I can't get across, and I don't know if Gabe is on the call right now, but we spent a lot of time on a coaching call about a week and a half ago talking about do not take those quick profits. If you have a quick profit, you risked a certain amount. You don't want to risk $3 and take $3 because that's going to make you a break-even trader. Sure, it stinks when a profitable swing trade has a little bit of, of positive momentum. It comes back to your entry point and you got to get out where you got again, which we call a flat. But that's just good trading. We can't get frustrated. We have to make sure that the rules are what keep us in the game. And if the rules say on a good trade to hold it, at the very least, up to our initial profit target, because that justifies the risk, then that's what we have to do. We can't get mad. We just have to trade what works over time. So let's actually talk about what that actually looks like. Okay. So getting back into the newsletter, hopping back over here. Speaking of being frustrated, oh, I'll assume you are, especially with long swing trade results. There's no reason to be. We can yell at the traffic, but it won't get there any faster. Okay. This picture of the last six weeks of sector rotation, which is this picture right here, perfectly sums up the Monday morning price action. Neutral at best to one week of bearish trading after new CPI and FOMC interest rates. So basically, we're neutral across the board here. And then we had a little bit of more bearish price action when the FOMC actually made their announcements. OK, but. What does that mean, right? What does that mean for actually pulling money out of the market? What does that mean for protecting your capital? 15 years ago, as a less experienced trader, I would have cursed and blamed the markets. Maybe you're doing this right now. Maybe you're actually seeing this in, your, in yourself. The only thing that got me, the cursing and the blaming, was bigger losses. I swiftly descended into what's known as revenge trading. And here, tell me if you could picture yourself doing this right now. I'll highlight that a little bit more trying to make back a bunch of small losses with one big aggressive position. Be smart, be patient, and manage risk. Please learn from my experience, learn from my previous trading losses, okay? Do not try and make back a bunch of small losses with one aggressive position. I know it sounds good. I know that you're like, yeah, this one trade is going to make back that $1,000 I lost on those four trades or whatever it happens to be. Fight yourself from doing that. The time to get aggressive in your position sizing and the time to get aggressive with how long you hold the trade is because there's good market conditions that validate getting more aggressive. We should not get more aggressive with our position size because our last few trades did not make money. If you do not dig a hole by getting overly aggressive, it's easier to get profitable because you're not digging out of that hole right now. So again, let's finish up on this part right here. Okay. Uh, let me actually pull that back in. Be smart, be patient and manage risk. This is the part that a lot of people really have a hard time with. And is probably one of the most important parts of our discord community where I'm constantly saying, be patient and think long-term. Once things open up, you'll be in good shape. Remember patience pays patience to wait for the good trades and patience to hold the winners. I can't stress this strongly enough. So, yep, right? Again, too many times we don't want to do that. Hey, Tony, good morning. Thank you. Da uh, good morning, David, as well. Good morning. Good morning. So, here's the thing I want to get across. And I'm, I'm if, if you've ever been inside my Discord community, if you've ever been on one of my coaching calls, I get really loud when important stuff happens. I'm not going to get loud now because, you know, it's early, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Hope maybe you're watching this on a replay, but I want to get this across really, really clearly. Trade by trade, the outcome is not predictable. I'm saying that very clearly, right? We've all been in positions where we're like, yeah, I want this trade to make money, and then it doesn't work, and you kind of get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Think long term. Trade by trade is not predictable, even if we set up fantastic trades that meet our edge. However, 
over a larger sample of good trades, whether it's 10, 20, or let's even use 100, or however many trades you make this month. If trade by trade is not predictable, even if they're good ideas, a larger sample size of your good edge is predictable. So remember, the very definition of an edge means most of the time it works the way you think, which means sometimes it's not going to. So if you stop right now in this very moment on your next trade, stop trying to care and think that each trade is predictable. It's not. It's one trade in the larger sample of your edge. So this is what we mean by think long term. Find a good idea, put the trade on, manage risk, manage the profit and go to the next trade. Do not get angry or quite frankly, even too excited about the results of the last trade. You could celebrate that on Saturday morning with a nice cup of coffee, looking over your P&L and being cool. I did what I was supposed to. But the better job you do of defining your edge, only going to find stocks that match your edge, you'll be in good shape. It's when we get too aggressive with ideas that don't match our edge because our previous trades were not profitable that we dig that hole for ourselves. Now, if you're not finding good ideas in the current market conditions, and I'm telling you right now, there's been some really good ideas. If you're not finding them, that simply means that there's something missing from what you're doing right now. And that simply for most people means that you're probably watching too many strategies or, and probably both, you're probably looking at too many stocks right now relative to your current skill level. And that's not a bad thing. Just admit where you are and then kind of really start to get efficient in your trading strategy, how you're looking at stocks. Say, if this happens, that matches my edge and only then place trades. If you have that edge really dialed in and you're still missing ideas and you look back and like, oh man, I missed that one. That just means that your list is probably a little bit too big. So if you're on my trading floor in New York City, or if you were in our community right now, in our Discord community, I would tell you to narrow your list, call out your trades, and let's actually talk about them while they're unfolding. There's nothing more frustrating than one of the stocks that you plan to trade does exactly what you wanted to, but you missed it. If you missed it, that just means get a little more efficient in how you're finding the ideas. So let's continue to work our way through the newsletter and set ourselves up for the week. Okay? So this is a big thing right here. Again, patience pays. And remember, the two reasons patience pays, waiting for the good ideas and holding the winners. Okay, So again, we talked about the news out of China today, sector rotation heading into today and heading into the week. And here's something I want to get across to you as well. I'm about to show you or talk to you about two trades that lost money for me last week, but I thought they were fantastic trades. So I stopped and now those trades are actually near breakout. So I want to get this across to you as well. If you feel like you're the only person on Wall Street that puts on a trade, it doesn't work out, and like you're the only person not making money, stop thinking that way. You can still place good trades that don't make money. We can do everything before the trade. How price action unfolds after that, well, that's up to the market. So don't get frustrated. Focus on good ideas. So I'm going to walk you through what those ideas were right now. Okay, Energy stocks perfectly lined up for a short sale last week. L in there. Red candles and below the daily 50 period moving average. So if we're talking about those, we're talking about the XLE for the most part. And if you're talking about where we were last week, okay, we take out those days. We're right there, right on the verge of a breakdown. Next support level all the way down here, taking a look at ExxonMobil as well at that point, Chevron at that point. And again, I only trade the market leaders. I don't trade the stocks you've never heard of. Right here looking for them to break down. So I looked to short and you can see they actually rallied since then. OK. All right. So I went short. They went up. I got stopped out and now they're perched at a new breakout level. So goes the trading experience of 2022. So now I'm not looking to short them anymore. They're kind of in that phantom zone right now. OK. The XLF closed higher on Friday, comes in at number two on the sector rotation. So, again, what we're talking about is this list right here. Financials. Number two. But most financial stocks of stature, again, I only trade the market leaders, sit below the daily 50 period moving average. JP Morgan shows some bullish promise to validate what we're seeing over here on the XLF. So again, Goldman Sachs, well below the 50, has not rallied with the rest of the market. It's up a little bit this morning. But again, that's kind of one of my last lines in the sand. JP Morgan is actually holding the 50 period moving average. Out of the two, I'm going to be looking more at JP Morgan. Okay. All right. 
Consumer cyclical continues to get dragged down by Tesla as of this moment. Tesla's trading at once. So think about this. Tesla at six o'clock this morning was at 120.80. Last I looked, it was 115, 116. So it's actually four dollars lower than where it was before. All right. Electric vehicles are not in good shape heading into 2023, but they're moving into better value areas. But that value is still debatable. Okay. So I just want to get across what I'm showing you here right now. This is literally the process that I go through for myself and for our community every day. So I want to challenge you. Are you breaking down the market? Are you breaking down the sectors? Are you then going into industry groups and you're saying, there it is. There's the easy money. That's what I'm going to go and look at today. I'm going to walk yourself all the way through this. If you are getting mediocre results, I can virtually guarantee you that you are doing mediocre game planning. So it's time to level up. Let's set our sights higher. Go look in that mirror and ask yourself, what kind of trader do you want to be in the stock market this year? Do you want to be mediocre Myron <laughs> or do you want to be profitable Paula? Let's let's go talk to Paula. All right. Again, it's all on you. Only you can decide how much spare time you want to put into this. How you spend your spare time will dictate how you spend your future. Mark that down. All right. All right. So low price doesn't always mean it's a good deal. Many viewed some of these stocks as grossly overvalued. Obviously, we're talking about 2021 prices. Technology and growth stocks stopped going down, but are they a long run? What I talked about before, not bearish is not the same as bullish. They sound the same. They're not. OK, NVIDIA fell 20 percent in just eight trading days and now sits at the daily 50 period moving average. Remember, that's my last line in the sand where I'll consider if you're a techie, this is the spot to take an initial entry. So zooming on back to NVIDIA and what we're looking at there, just to give everybody a visual here. So from this high to the lows over here, it's down 20% and resting right at the 50 period moving average. Now, here's a big thing. Remember, we just talked about that if something happens, right? That's the setup. We still need for NVIDIA to start heading back up. If it doesn't head back up, there's no trade. If this thing continues and starts to move down, there's no trade. I want to be very clear about that. Remember what we just said before. You could be a genius and put your entire trading plan together. So let's let's take a look at uh, Alpha, right? Let's say Alpha has a great trading plan heading into today. If they go into the day saying, I'm going to buy this stock at this price, and let's say that price is $50. If it's right now at 48 and 50 is the entry price, it has to get to 50 before you get in. At least the way I do things, I want it to be moving in my favor. If that thing opens at 48 and starts to trade lower, I'm leaving it alone. It's not doing what I planned for. If this happens, then I plan to do this. Write that down. It will save you and make you a small fortune. You'll be surprised at how many times you say this and this never happens and you trade anyway. If this happens, then I plan to do this. Make that your mantra for 2023. Okay. So let's keep diving a little bit deeper into what we're looking at. So we're taking a look at a possibility of a long in NVIDIA if it catches a bid. Industry groups. So now we're diving a little bit deeper into where other stuff I'm looking at right now. As mentioned, energy dominates the potential longs because they are resting right at a breakout level right there. Okay, Potential longs, very clearly, purposely worded there. But a new group tops the list in the industry groups, footwear and accessories. Some stocks to think about here, Nike, Crocs, Deck, Skechers, and Foot Locker. So if we go over to Nike, Nike has actually had a pretty good run and had an amazing earnings rally. So this is Nike over the last earnings report. Again, what did I say before about earnings bullish moves have been some of the better long opportunities in 2022. Look at this move in Nike. And now here's the next move in Nike, this gigantic gap here, now holding the bid and resting right near a breakout level with some room to go. So again, probably want to jot these tickers down. I'll actually post them here uh, into the chat just so that you have them right there. Put them in the list for you. So this is another that we're going a little bit deeper into the list, right? Semiconductor stocks and solar stocks joined auto manufacturers, which obviously includes Tesla at this particular moment. On the bearish side of the tracks, mortgage finance companies come in near the bottom. So we're looking at potential stocks that could go down right now, maybe buy puts like um, JM put in here, looking at post Tesla puts, uh, Rocket and Lending Tree, both on the bearish side. So what am I looking at to start this week? The possibility of NVIDIA, but we're also breaking down Schlumberger. So if you remember Schlumberger, we're talking about energy in that market, right? To start the week with a new swing trade long, we're looking at SLB, 
Schlumberger, just to bring that stock into picture here. Okay, and if we go out a little bit longer term and take a look at where we are in the big picture, the next big level is up near 60s. Actually, maybe on the weekly chart, we can actually see that a little bit better up here in the mid 60s. So the trade that I'm looking at to start the week, again, this is just one trade heading into the week with everything that we just broke down. Planned as a two-step trade. This is very important here as well. This is how I'm planning to get my shares. Trade with minor resistance above 55. So $54 buy stop for my initial entry, $51 stop loss, $62 as my initial profit target. Again, I want to be clear about this. When I say initial profit target, I'm not limiting how much I could make. Initial is a very key word there. It's the amount of risk that I'm willing to take and the initial profit target that justifies taking that risk. If we get up to that initial profit target, again, first piece and then second piece, then I will shift over to what we call a profit maximizer. The profit maximizer is a step-by-step -step system for holding on to winning trades. So again, if you have all those little paper cuts, that just means that the other side of the trade that there's been some good trades that you've had, you didn't hold them long enough. So you need to personally build something for yourself like we have in our community called the profit maximizer. Everybody understands taking losses and getting out at the stop loss, right? The other side of the trade is what we also have to work on, which is having a same set of strict rules for holding those profitable trades if and when they follow through. I'm willing to bet that you can go back to 2022 this year and think about some big winners that you had that you let go too early. That's exciting because that means that you're on the right side of that trade you just need to level up one more level, level up one more level <laughs> and put something in place that says when I have profitable trades. And here's a key part based on current market conditions. This is the kind of profit maximizer I plan to use. Now, just taking that even one step deeper, there's different market conditions. So if we go back to what the market looks like right now and we kind of zoom on over into this, this is a tougher market condition. We're kind of just dancing back and forth. There's really no strong, obvious bias to the market. We had that a little bit further back over here where we had a good week. We had another good week, right? We have two different kinds of profit maximizers based on that research that I provide for everybody every night. We are looking for follow through. We're looking for order flow. We're looking to piggyback what the smart money is already doing. When the market is the way it is right now, we usually use what's called our momentum profit maximizer. And again, it's a step-by-step -step system that as soon as that thing slows down, we're a little bit more inclined to move up our trailing stop loss. We'll give it some more room, but we're a little bit more inclined because the market conditions are a little bit more neutral. We want to make sure we hang on to that profit. But when the market kind of opens up where the sector rotation, the big three, the NASDAQ, the SPY and the S&P 500 and industry groups are all doing the same thing, then we shift over to the trend profit maximizer. And those conditions call for allowing that stock to breathe, add to that position. And we're looking for a much bigger target because the road is open and that's the right thing to do. It's recognizing those different kinds of market conditions that will separate you from everybody else who says trading doesn't work because you're paying attention. Recognizing it in the moment and having this kind of research to understand what you're in in that moment makes all the difference in the world because you're no longer guessing. You literally know the kind of profit you're going after before the trade starts. So if you take a little bit of a deeper look into the way I, I put together this trade in Schlumberger and how I'm looking for the initial trade, I am literally walking you through how I plan to put the first piece on, where I plan to add the second piece, what my initial profit target is. When I get my full shares and it gets up to that level, then I shift to profit maximizer. Now, here's the cool thing. We just talked about energy stocks. We talked about this stock being in that area, right? If that group and sector gets continues to get stronger and starts to rally, I'll be shifting into profit maximizer on the trend side because more money is doing the same thing. So just ask yourself again, I hope I'm challenging you a little bit right now to just dig a little bit deeper. What is going on in the big picture? And what does that mean for the kind of profits I should be going after for the risk that I'm taking right now? So all the research I just showed you, all that kind of stuff, that's what I do and I give to our community every day. Uh, if you'd like to join me for two weeks, our next boot camp starts on January 3rd. It's kind of a really awesome way to start the new year. 
So that's the entire breakdown for right now, heading into the end of the year. So first off, I want to say thank you so much for being here with me. If you subscribe to our channel, I want you to know how much it means to me. I hope that I provided massive value for this year. We also have a big changes coming next year that I'm really excited about. Some more live um, sessions that we do together to help you overcome your challenges. Those are going to be kind of fun. Uh, so please, if you could do me a favor, if you haven't done it already, hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you get updates. We've got some big changes, big, really exciting changes come for 2023. I want to challenge you right now. we got a big, long weekend coming up with New Year's and all that kind of stuff. Really think through this week. What held you back in 2023 trading the stock market? And what specifically do you need to fix? And can you fix immediately? What part of trading did you find challenging and you want to either fix or eliminate? And where did you make the most money? What kind of setups and which stocks produce the best P&L? Dig into your P&L. Don't be afraid to go look at it because I'm sure you're going to find some nuggets in there. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made money in that stock on a regular basis. It's not always the stocks that you like to trade, but sometimes it's the stocks that you read well. You have to work a little bit harder, but you have a good read on them and you make money. All right. I'm going to head out, everybody. Have an awesome, awesome week. I wanted to wish everybody a healthy and happy new year, no matter where you are. We've got people all over the world watching the videos. And please do me a favor, challenge yourself between now and January 1st, heading into next year. Put in place what's going to help you be successful. Don't blame the market. Don't blame the Fed. Don't wait for somebody to do you a favor. Go and get it yourself. You'll be shocked. And when you spend that little bit of extra time, how much of a big difference it's going to make for you. All right. Have a great day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.